15 minutes motivational speech and this one we're going to talk about the eightfold paths of Buddha we ain't going to do too much commentary the website did a good job explaining this so we're going to read from them start with right speech right speech means abstention from telling lies from backbiting and slander and talk that may be about hatred, enmity, which is conflict, disunity, and disharmony among individuals or groups of people, from harsh, rude, impolite, malicious, and abusive language, and from idle, useless and foolish babble and gossip when one abstains from these forms of wrong and harmful speech one naturally has to speak the truth has to use words that are friendly and benevolent pleasant gentle meaningful and useful one should not speak carelessly speech should be at the right time in the right place if one cannot say something useful one should Keep noble silence. Right action. Right action aims at promoting moral, honorable, peaceful conduct. It admonishes us that we should abstain from destroying life, from stealing, from dishonest dealings, from illegitimate sexual intercourse, and that we should also help others to lead a peaceful and honorable life in the right way. Right livelihood. Right livelihood means that one should abstain from making one's living through a profession that brings harms to others, such as trading in arms, lethal weapons, intoxicated drinks and poisons, killing animal, cheating, etc. And also in these days, um, toxic content, <laughs> entertainment, so called. And should live by a profession which is honorable, blameless, and innocent of harm to others. One can clearly see here that Buddhism is strongly opposed to any kind of war when it lays down that trade in arms and lethal weapons is an evil and just means of livelihood. These three factors, right speech, right action, and right livelihood of the Eightfold Path constitute ethical conduct it should be realized that the buddha's ethical and moral conduct aiming at promoting a happy harmonious life both for the individual and for society this moral conduct is considered as an indispensable foundation for our higher higher spiritual attainments no spiritual development is possible without this moral basis Mental discipline. Next come mental discipline, in which are included three other factors of the eightfold path, <coughs> namely right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. Right effort. Right effort is the energetic will to prevent evil and unwholesome states of mind from arising, and to get rid of such evil and unwholesome states that have already arisen within a man and also to produce to cause to arise good and wholesome states of mind not yet arisen and to develop and bring to perfection the good and wholesome state of man already present in any man right mindfulness right mindfulness is the diligently aware mindful and attentive with regard to the activities of the body, ki, kaya, sensation or feeling, vedana, the activities of the mind, sita, 
and ideas through conception and things, Dharma. The practice of concentration on breathing, Anapanasati, is one of the well-known exercises connected with the body for mental development. There are several other ways of develop attentiveness in relation to the body as more as a meditation. With regard to sensations and feelings, one should be clearly aware of all forms of feelings and sensations, pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral, of how they appear and disappear within oneself. So, so this the basically understanding of happiness, sadness, neutralness, and the different feelings that we chemically produce and an understanding of those things concerning the activities of the mind one should be aware whether one's mind is lustful or not given to hatred or not deluded or not distracted or concentrated etc and in this way one should be aware of all movements of the mind how they arise and disappear as regard ideas thoughts conceptions and things one should know their nature, how they appear and develop and disappear. <coughs> like where these thoughts, these conceptions and things ultimately know where you got it. <laughs> because they you being influenced in many ways throughout life. Know where these things come from. How they are developed, how they are suppressed, destroyed and so on. These four forms of mental culture and meditation are treated in detail in the Satipatthana Sutta setting up of mindfulness Right concentration The third and last factor of mental discipline is right concentration leading to four stages of Dhyana generally called the trance or the Reku element in the first stage of Dhyana passionate desires and certain unwholesome thoughts like sensuous lust, ill will, languor, worry, restlessness, and skeptical doubt are discarded, and feelings of joy, happiness are maintained, along with certain mental activities. Then, in the second stage, all intellectual activities are suppressed, tranquility, and one pointedness of mind develop, and the feeling of joy and happiness are still retained. In the third stage, the feeling of joy, which is an active sensation, also disappears, while the disposition of happiness still remains, in addition to mindful equanimity. equanimity. Finally, in the fourth stage of Diana, all sensations, even happiness and unhappiness, of joy and sorrow disappear, only pure equanimity and awareness remains. Thus, the mind is trained and disciplined and developed through right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. Wisdom, the remaining two factors, namely right thought and right was understanding, constitute wisdom in the Noble Eightfold Path. <coughs> right thought, right thought denotes the uh, thoughts of selfless renunciation or detachment, thoughts of love and thoughts of non-violence, which are extended to all beings. It is very interesting and important to note here that thoughts of selfless detachment, love and non-violence are grouped on the side of wisdom. This clearly shows that true wisdom is endowed with these noble qualities and that all thoughts of selfless desire, ill will, hatred and violence are the result of a lack of wisdom in all spheres of life where the individual social or political right understanding right understanding is the understanding of things as they are and it is the and it is the four noble truth that explain things as they are right understanding therefore is ultimately reduced to the understanding of the four noble truth this understanding is the highest wisdom which sees the ultimate reality. According to Buddhism, there are two sorts of understanding. What we generally call understanding is knowledge, an accumulated memory, and intellectual grasping of, an, of a subject according to certain given data. 
this is called knowledge knowing accordingly I knew border and it is not very deep real deep understanding or penetration you know you see that a lot some people only think on a surface level thinking instead of thinking deeper into things so they got two different and this they call it the Anu Boda and then they got the real deep understanding of penetration Pati Weda of seeing a thing in its true nature without name or label thus penetration is possible only when the mind is free from all impurities and fully developed through meditation and that's an example I like to give on that is some people see a police officer some people see the police and some people that's that would be Anu Buddha but if some people see James Smalls who calls oneself and works at an occupation called police officer with the uniform on that would be Pate Diwa <laughs> you see things as it is without names or label He's a man who was called by his mother, James Small, who calls himself police officer. <laughs> That's the truth. But only some people only see a police officer. Officer Small, they see things in, in, in those type of ways instead of for what it actually is. And people go throughout life thinking like, I know Buddha is knowing things as it is told to them. And as we've been society paying our mind to see things <laughs> instead of seeing the truth of things because the truth of the matter is that's a man just like you for this brief account of the noble a4 path one may see that it is a way of life to be followed practiced and developed by each individual and another thing about that too people will have protests and make songs if the police <laughs> at the end of the day you we talk about nobody because ain't no such thing as a police that's a ideal <laughs> that's a some a concept so you can't really say if the concept because ain't nothing that they can react back to you now the people who operate in such position they they people like you and me what the ideal that's what you need to worry about you need to worry about the police worry about the human being who do the action under the name of police <laughs> if something go wrong deal with the person because they got to make the decisions so we're doing a good act like helping the old lady who get her purse snatch then they actually doing that's what anybody should do. Capture that person and make sure you get the birth back. Anybody can do that as a, as a human act. Just because they do it and they call themselves a certain thing. Doesn't change the reality that they're just a human being that's wearing a funny uniform. <laughs> so politics like that, we look at the we look at the substance of the thing instead of the actual reality of a situation so from this brief account of the eight noble four path one may see that it is a <clears throat> way of life to be followed practiced and developed by each individual it is a self discipline and body word and mind nobody can help you this is your own work self-development and self-purification it has nothing to do with a belief prayer worship or ceremony in that sense it has nothing to do with popularity called religion it is a path leading to realization of ultimate reality to complete freedom and happiness and peace through, through moral spiritual intellectual perfection so that should be a good 15 minutes we're gonna end it right here Peace. Till next time.